Okay, guys, let's talk about Module 00104, Section 2.00, Power Solve, in the NCCR Core Curriculum. Trade terms you need to look over and become familiar with. Circular saws. Just like drills, all circular saws have a great deal in common. However, the weight, balance, and feel of the saws can differ quite a bit. Here's the main thing with this saw. Every guard that's on there has to be there and be in good working order. A lot of people like to take off this bottom guard or pin it back because they say that it gets in the way. Let's think about that for a second. I don't think D DeWalt would design a guard that goes on their drill that gets in your way or makes it harder for you to work. They invested millions of dollars into this guard that has to be there to make sure that it covers the, the rules that they got to cover and that it does not hinder you from work in any kind of way. So it's not going to get in your way. It pushes back and gets out of your way. If you, if you can't see the line, you're using the saw wrong. We're supposed to stand off to the side, look over here at this guide site, use two hands on this saw, and carefully cut with it every time. This is an extremely dangerous saw. It'll draw 10 or more amps, which is a lot of power. It'll kick back, kick out boards, do all kind of things to you. We, most of our maintenance or electric people are usually not working with one. And before you do, you need to make sure you, that it's in good working order and it's got all the right stuff. The blades need to match the teeth, the amount of teeth, all that for the work you're doing. Uh, depends on what kind of blade you buy. You got to make sure you buy one that matches the saw that you have. You want to never force a saw. That's going to come with dull blades and things like that or, or cutting crooked. So we want to cut straight and make sure that we're using nice sharp blades and even on our drill bits too. Uh, usually with the drills or the saws, when something bad happens is when we start pushing on them and trying to force them. Manage your cord before you start cutting, not while you're cutting. Keep the lower blade guard free and clean. Don't add oil or grease. This one right here, this, this line is what the blade took out. This is the kerf, the K-E-R-F right here. The saw kerf must be considered in measurements and when making the cut. Always be aware of which side of the cut line you need to place the saw. So like, if we were framing or something and this had to be an exact length, you would, you would, you would mark the scrap side and cut on that side of the line so this board would be the exact length. If you cut down the middle or on the other side, then the blade, the, the, the board's going to be a little bit too short. All right. So it just depends on, on what you're doing. If it really matters, you got to take into account this curve and which side that it's on. It says, as you mark the cut line, mark an X on the side this waist. Guards will move as cuts progress. Have both hands on the saw. Have the material clamped. Use the blade as a guide once the notch in the base plate moves off the workplace. Workpiece. Jigsaws says technically these are reciprocating saws. So the first one we looked at back here, circular saw. Round blade turns around in a circle. When we come to this jigsaw, reciprocating so it goes back and forth. All right. It said they are adjustable base plates, swiveling left to right, and allow them to make beveled cuts and all kind of angles and different cuts with them. And then a reciprocating saw, a lot of us will call it a Sawzall, but that's actually the Milwaukee brand is the Sawzall. Uh, electricians use this more than any other saw that there is. We're not usually doing framing work. We're usually doing demo or just trying to cut something off to a certain length. Uh, the reciprocating saw goes back and forth so it can get into a lot of places that a circular saw couldn't. You can uh, put the blade in with the teeth down or up in it to give you more space with it. It comes with teeth with a lot of teeth per inch, few teeth per inch, whether I'm cutting wood, plastic, or metal. It comes with long blades, short blades, very diverse uh, variety of blades for this saw right here. Reciprocating because it goes back and forth. On this, you want to bend blade and blade while cutting. Ensure that the, the blade is properly secured in the saw. Broken blades often leave a piece in the mount and keep a firm grip. Clamp the work piece down and be aware of what may fall or change position. Use sh sharp blades because they can dull quickly. 
Using higher speeds for wood than metal, metal blades have significantly more teeth. Usually when you cut metal, you want to slow down a little bit. Portable band saws are used almost exclusively on metal. Uh, little or no added pressure is required. Check the blade for wear. Low speeds are best for cutting metal. And there is our portable band saw. That may be the electrician's next uh, most favorite saw there is that one. We can cut a lot of things with it, pipe, flex, all kind of things. It is a portable bandsaw, which means that the blade is one piece that goes around between these two drums. We want to support the saw and uh, not push against it because it is heavy enough, like it says, where it doesn't take a lot of pressure to do it. This blade is very thin. If I flex it or bind it, it will snap in two. So, you, just, you know, most of the time when we're going wrong with that, we put too much pressure on it. Power miter saws. It says compound miter saws allow for multiple angle cuts in a single cut. Sliding models allow for cutting wider stock. Many uh, abrasive saws are for cutoff service only. The cutting angle cannot be set. All right. And then we got some review questions for this section. It says the most important maintenance on a circular saw is at the upper blade guard, lower blade guard, blade, or base plate. We want to make sure we take care of all of it, but particularly that lower blade guard. It says, the two types of saws capable of making straight and curved cuts are band saws and reciprocating saws, jig saws and band saws, jig saws and reciprocating saws, miter saws and cutoff saws. It's going to be jig saws and reciprocating saws, because they go back and forth so we can get them into most anything and start cutting with. Miter saws and cutoff saws are similar because they are both used to make minor cuts, make bevel cuts, make curved cuts, or cut irregular shapes. We'll say miter cuts. As a general rule, the higher teeth per inch, that's if we take that saw blade and measure one inch of it and count the number of teeth in it. As a general rule, the higher the TPI, the Higher the cut, lower the cut, rougher the cut, smoother the cut. The more teeth you have, the smoother the cut will be. But it will take a lot longer to cut with it. You might want to start off with these saws with, with a higher TPI until you get used to them. And then when you can go to a lower TPI and control them like you want to, you can make the cuts a lot faster. All right, blanks are typically used for ripping and cross-cutting lumber. Band saws, miter saws, table saws, or jig saws. It's going to be a table saw. All right, guys, that's it for that section. Next section will be 3.0.0, .0 .0, grinders and oscillating multi-tools, and I will see you over there.